I think it looks really good. <laughs> We're Steph and Travis, Canadians who didn't know much about sailing. We didn't let that or a global pandemic stop us from living our dreams, and we've been winging it ever since. We took off from Toronto and made it to Grenada in year one, and we've got no plans on stopping. Subscribe to join our life on the water. Thanks to our patrons who keep the dream going. Welcome back, guys. If you saw last week's episode, we mentioned how we've got one last thing to do in Horda before we leave. When we were in St. Martin, we knew we were going to be painting our name on a wall. We didn't realize how crazy some of them looked here. And all we had was a pizza box that we were going to cut a stencil out of and white spray paint. But after seeing how intricate some of the paintings have been and the amount of detail, how large they were, I think we felt like we had to step it up a notch. So we're going all out with this one, attention to all the details, and we're gonna hopefully find some more paint so that we can incorporate the red and white and black, not just have like white, because I don't think that would really stand out. Yeah, we were just gonna do a white stencil. <laughs> yeah. Ours is gonna be pretty basic, and then we looked at everybody's and we're like, whoa, these are really nice. So we definitely had to step it up. It's pretty sweet, but since our logo is kind of special font, I need to try to copy that font. So I took parchment paper, copied our gypsy sign on the boat here, outlined it, and then I was going to cut it out and then trace the parchment paper onto the cardboard, but that turned out to be very hard because parchment paper rips really easily. So then I decided the old dot method. So I taped it to the cardboard and then I just punched a bajillion holes through. So then when I take the parchment paper off, there'll be all the holes. Good old pizza stain. Yeah, good old pizza boxes. So you can kind of see that now I just have to follow these marks, the dots. Nice. flag, trace that out, and then we're going to cut it out of the cardboard. Our plan is, so we're going to have a Canadian flag behind, and then Gypsy is going to be inside the flag. This is the most tedious part, but it's effective it's in the details. This is what we're going to try to have accomplished at the end but these letters are going to be black and that's why I made this. And then we're going to paint this black. I kind of just scoured up and down the street many times to find an ideal spot. And it's kind of hard because there isn't a lot of real estate available. So we have to find a spot where it's pretty much rubbed off enough to the point where you can't even make out any words or names. We definitely don't want to paint over anybody's. But I think we found a good spot up here on the top. So I think doing an asymmetrical flag will be really funky. It'll be, yeah, it'll give it a little bit of a twist. And plus it's high up, I think it's really cool. Big indent, so like imagine when we're stenciling it might create a problem, but. Meh. I think it's a cool spot. It overlooks all the boats here too. Well, it's on like the grand wall here and it's a hard spot, so like. And we decided to use Kiwi Grip because we had extra of it. We know that stuff's super thick, so it probably won't wash off very easily. And then we're gonna just use um, spray paint on top. So hopefully that sticks if we get a good enough base. We're hoping that this lasts a while. It's a little bit harder to access, but I think we'll manage.
that proud flag. Not a perfect match, but is this ridiculous? Ridiculous. Probably not as ridiculous as what I'm doing. What are you doing? I'm trying to make my own gloves. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're painting with makeup brushes, number one, because we didn't want to buy any more brushes. If we can preserve anything a little bit longer. Call me sticky fingers. <laughs> I think we're coming along. I think we're quite pleased with it. Final touches. Okay guys, after a lot of fickleness and a lot of work, we're done. <laughs> I don't know what, like six hours? <laughs> we wouldn't make much money if we were painters, that's for sure. I think it looks really good. Like it looks Pretty pro. Obviously the the year and our names don't look that pro, but looks like we stamped it and then just signed our names. Looks sweet. I think it looks good. It's fresh. <laughs> the red really stamped out. Yeah. Hey, it looks sweet. Yeah, maybe we go find some clear coat. I thought I'll even do anything. Mix up some epoxy, plaster it over. We couldn't leave until we got that baby on the wall, so. Yeah, and I'm happy with it. Look at it, it just stands out. The whole wall, it's all these cool colors, and then bam! bam. <laughs> We're heading to, you can never ask me these names. My plotter died, so I can't even tell you. What's the name we're going to? Sarah. To Sarah? To Sarah. To Sarah. So yeah, we're heading from Horta to Tresera. We have 3.4 knots of wind, but our speed over ground is 3.8 to four knots. So it's kind of funny. True wind? Speed. There's no denying what we want. There's no denying what we want. Playing games, no. There's no denying what we want. There's no denying what we want. Playing games, no. Just coming up to the entrance of the bay here, but it is rough out today. I'll be surprised if this bay is calm. Pretty majestic behind you. Yeah, it looks really cool. A little ominous, but a little enchanting because the colors are very silvery gray blue. It's cool, but that was a righteous sail over here. It was only supposed to maybe take us 11 hours, but what are we now, like 14 hours? Tercera is another volcanic island in the Portuguese Azorean archipelago in the middle of the North Atlantic. It's about 397 kilometers squared, or 153 square miles. 56,000 people live on the island, of which 35,000 live in the capital of Angra do Heroísmo. Angra means Cover Bay, and Heroísmo means heroism. The capital got its name from Queen Maria II to commemorate the citizens here for defending the island from a Miguelist attack back in 1829. In Portuguese history, a Miguelist is basically someone who supports absolute monarchy. This 
decided to rest yesterday because we got in pretty, well, I guess it was evening time. And it's been an adjustment for us because in the Caribbean, we were on the boat at like five o'clock because the sun went down so early. But here, people eat dinner a lot later. People are out and about at night and the sun doesn't set until like 9.30. So we've been up a lot later than we're used to and starting the day a lot later. So we're gonna get a fresh start this morning to explore Angra. Jump into the car on a Friday night I want to drive with you Looking for a bar in the nearest town I've never seen a sky so blue Some people have painted the wall here but there are like a tiny fraction That guy's not losing any fish Look at the size of that that green you see right there is Monte Brazil an extinct volcano that's a popular area to go for a hike or a walk and just be immersed in nature. And that's what's on the list for today, so we're gonna be checking that out. Shaped by a combination of European, American, and Asian influences, Angra is the Azores' oldest city and the only one of the archipelago classified as a UNESCO heritage site. This town's super cool. They'll have like white, and then their doors and window frames are always painted like a color. I like when they do that even on the cloudiest of days, it just looks so vibrant. So when it's sunny, it just lights right up. It's cool, there's so many levels to this place. And there's always like a cool little way to get up to the next level. This has got like a little pathway. Goes around there, up here. All these beautiful flowers. And too, da, 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 cool. Up there, and you're at the next level. Levels. You got the beach, the boardwalk, and then you got into this fort here. And all in the middle is a cool, uh, you got a full playground park. You got some workout equipment over there. You got a whole path that you can do a jog around as well. Yeah. This place is cool because there's just a lot of, uh, just a lot of spots to hang out. Oh. And like, we'll show you in a minute, along this wall, there's like two little seats always. They like break up the wall a bit. You get a wicked view. Part of the grounds are home to an active military base, so there are certain spots that are blocked off for visitor access, but you can still walk through a large part of it, like this massive 16th century fortress. Do you smell that? Oh. It's so weird when you, when you travel. Like, we've been gone for quite some time, but, and then in the Caribbean, you don't have a lot of smells, like, Barely any smells in the Caribbean. It's like kind of weird. It feels like your nose doesn't work. Unless you like flush the toilet and it stinks. That's like it. So when you come here and you get to smell everything, it's like, wow, surrounded by pine trees right now. And it smells. So good. It smells just like home. I haven't smelled that smell in quite some time. This tan is gone. It's funny because we're sweating right now, but as soon as we get back to the boat tonight, we'll be absolutely frigid with like sweaters, fleece pants, socks, a duvet. So pretty. We just found a non-certified, not the spec, slide up here in the trees look at this thing <laughs> this looks cool <laughs> i was like sweaty so i'm sticking to it and then i put my hands down and it like plastic burned me almost it reminds me of those slides <laughs> where like they look good and but then they're, they're just not horrible because they're yeah. like well no design to that Okay, will you try it? <laughs> oh. <laughs> How fun was it though? That's a sweet slide. You get the best views from all levels up here. It's also a nature reserve, so you'll come across various animals and birds. Meow. 
Look at all these little cat houses. It's so cute. Apparently there's a lot of feral cats here. And if you wanted to own a cat, there's a tax on owning cats here because they're, they're invasive and there's a ton of them everywhere. So it's like owning a raccoon back at home. Can you say hello or hola? Look at this shot, Steph. Oh wow, look at this bird. So in the Azores, the primary language is Portuguese, but a lot of people speak English because they teach English in school here to a certain extent. Like we said last week, wherever we go and there's a new language, we like to try to learn the language, even though we probably won't be here long enough to really get to know it. We still like to get a little familiar with it and it's kind of fun learning. If you've watched this for a little while now, then you know Skillshare is my go-to whenever I want to learn something new. So I do want to thank Skillshare for sponsoring this week's episode. If you're a new viewer to our channel or you're not familiar with what Skillshare is, Skillshare is an online learning community that offers a ton of different classes on a whole variety of different topics. And the class that I've recently come across to learn a little bit of Portuguese is led by Kieran Ball, and it's called 3-Minute Portuguese. I've actually taken this class, um, the French lessons, led by Kieran, and I really liked it, so I figured this one would be a good one to try out. And I like it because the lessons are in 3-minute intervals, so you can kind of learn slowly, take everything in, not get overwhelmed by a completely new language and learn at your own pace. So yeah, if you're interested in learning a new language or picking up a new skill in whatever topic, Skillshare is a really good place to look because you'll probably find it there and a whole lot more. The classes are ad-free, they're for all levels of learners, and they're constantly adding new classes, so the learning is endless on there. Right now is a great time to check out Skillshare because they're offering the first 1,000 of our subscribers who use the link that I'm going to put in the description box below, a one-month free trial. So check them out and let us know what classes you've been taking in the comments below. There's so much to explore on this island that we couldn't pack it all in one episode. Did we mention that this island's also known as the Party Island? Seems like we got here at just the right time. We're going to be getting immersed in the cultural festivities in next week's episode, so be sure to hit the subscribe button and that you've got that notification bell turned on. We'll see you next Friday.